Almost every year for over a decade, there has been an April Fool's update for Minecraft that lasted only 24 hours. They started out simple in 2010 with just a tweet about a fake Minecraft 4D, and the next year had locked chests, which would bring you to a fake Minecraft store where you could buy supply crate keys to open the locked chests. Obviously, none of these items could actually be purchased, but this was the first time Mojang actually added something to the game as an April Fool's joke, and it only got crazier from here. Since 2013, there have been a total of seven complete April Fool's updates that you can actually play through. Each one added a bunch of new features that drastically change how you play the game. I've always loved these updates, but I realized I've never actually attempted to beat them. So that's why I decided to be the first to take on the challenge of beating every single April Fool's update. And let me just say, it was brutal. The first April Fool's update released is called Minecraft 2.0, which came out so long ago you can't even play it on a normal Minecraft launcher. So I was in for a tough time. Right when I loaded into the world, it instantly started raining. At the time, I thought this was just unlucky, but in reality, it was a sign of the impossible challenge coming in just a few seconds. So I grabbed some wood from the nearby trees and realized the blocks talk to you. Oh, wait, what? The block is talking to me. That tickles. Ouch, I'm sorry. Bully, stop punching me. It's not my fault, I need the wood. I used that wood to make a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. Then as I was digging down to get some stone, I randomly took five hearts of damage, turned around and saw a billion mobs surrounding me and I instantly died. Are you serious? Did those all just spawn on me? Oh, and now they're gone. At first, I assumed that being struck by lightning and the mob spawning was only something that happened during thunderstorms, and that I had just gotten unlucky by the world starting out raining. But I quickly learned that this is the impossible version. Every 60 seconds or so, I would get struck by lightning, dealing half my health, my sprint would get disabled, and a horde of mobs would spawn around me, basically guaranteeing my death. This happened over and over and over and over and over again. So after about 30 attempts, so after about 31 attempts, I realized that this wasn't gonna be a fun and easy video. This was going to be the hardest challenge I have ever done. So to avoid belonging at Winnie Hut General, I decided to start from scratch, but this time play in hardcore mode, which means if I die, the world gets deleted and I have to start all over. And just in case this didn't sound difficult enough, I gave myself only two weeks to be all seven April Fool's updates. And if I fail to do that, I'll buy my brother Subway sandwiches for a whole year. Wait, really? Yeah. If I fail the challenge, I'll buy you Subway for a year. Okay. So now with the deadline on the clock, I had to get serious. I was doing quite a few test runs trying to find a strategy that could work for beating this update. So while I do that, let's move on to the next update and we'll come back and check on this one later. This is the love and hugs update. The colors in this world are super saturated and there's heart shaped clouds. Most importantly though, I only have one heart and no food. While crafting my stone tools, I also noticed that instead of getting a stone sword, I got a stone heart. I tried to use it on a pig, and instead of damaging the pig, I gained a heart. Now I had two. two. I quickly figured out that when I deal damage or take damage, I just gain hearts instead. So I'm essentially invincible, which is quite literally the opposite of the last update. So I started off thinking this is gonna be really easy to beat, but that all changed when I entered the nether. To beat the game, I need to collect blaze rods to craft ender eyes and go to the end. The only way to get blaze rods is to kill a blaze, but I can't deal damage. Uh, how do I get blaze rods? So after racking my brain for a little bit and wondering if this update was just unbeatable, cause I have to kill the blazes, but also the ender dragon. How am I even gonna do that? But let's focus on one problem at a time. I need to deal with these blazes. Wait a second. Okay, actually, I think I have an idea. I headed back to the overworld, grabbed a pumpkin and a bit of snow, which was easy since in this update, regardless of the biome, snow will just randomly appear for some reason. I used those to build a snow golem and collect a bunch of snowballs because even though snowballs do zero damage to most mobs, the keyword is most, the only mob in the entire game they deal damage to is blazes. So even though I can't hurt the blaze, I'm hoping the snowballs can. And... It did! And with just a couple snowballs, I was able to kill the blazes and collect blaze rods. Oh. 
After collecting 9, I headed back to the overworld. The next step to beating the game is to get at least 12 ender pearls, but like everything else, I can't kill Enderman to get the pearls. And this update was before piglins were added to the game, so I can't trade gold for pearls either. What is in the game at this point though, is villager trading. And the cleric villager can trade you ender pearls once they're leveled up enough. So after traveling for a bit, I finally found a village that had a cleric villager, but the trade options to level it up were gonna cause another problem. Okay, so I can't really get rotten flesh cause I can't kill zombies, but I can get gold. So it looks like I'm hitting the caves. So I needed a few stacks of gold, but I mostly ended up just grabbing a bit of iron. I found out lava doesn't burn items in this update. I discovered a zombie spawner built out of quartz instead of cobblestone, and I got some diamonds. But after a couple hours of mining, I had only found 11 gold, which isn't even close to enough. So I decided to head back to the village to try to think of another way to level up the villager quicker. When all of a sudden, it hit me. Literally. Apparently, in the Love and Hugs update, witches will throw health potions at you instead of damage ones, which seemed pretty useful since these potions can actually damage zombies, which would be perfect for getting rotten flesh to trade and level up the villager. This would take a really long time to gather all of that on the surface though, but luckily, I had found that zombie spawner in the cave. So I had the witch follow me and I let it down to the spawner. One of the chests had a name tag in it, so I put that on the witch so it wouldn't despawn. I trapped it in a box and then dug out and built a little room that would use water to push the zombies into one spot with a hopper and chest underneath. So when I stand up here, the witch will throw its potions at me, they'll hit the zombies, dropping a bunch of rotten flesh. This would still take a little bit, so I decided to AFK here overnight and just let the items collect. Okay, it's the next day. I let this farm run overnight. Oh, very nice. That should be the perfect amount. Okay, let's get out of here. This farm worked much better than I thought. So with our newly acquired rotten flesh, I made my way back up to the village and could finally trade with the villagers to get the ender pearls. What? Thanks for your donation. Yeah, so apparently Mojang really didn't want anybody to beat this update and they even thought ahead so much to essentially remove villager trading. Any item I trade just turns into paper thanking me for their donation. I was not trying to donate. So even after all that work, I had to think of a different way to get ender pearls or else beating this update was just impossible. The only option I had left was just to figure out a way to kill Enderman. And the only thing I could think of was with TNT. In this update, TNT doesn't hurt me or even break blocks, so I have no idea if it'll hurt Enderman, but this was my last resort, so it was at least worth a shot to try. To craft TNT though, I need five gunpowder each, so I need to deal with some creepers first. I had the idea of killing mobs with suffocation using sand blocks, which wouldn't work for Enderman, but it could work for creepers, and it ended up working. I got my first gunpowder, and then I realized instead of just suffocation, I can just drop them down and have have the fall damage deal with them, constantly waiting for the night and only being able to find a few creepers at a time that only would drop zero to two gunpowder each really made this a time consuming process. To figure out if this would even work and see how much TNT I would need, I decided to do a test run on an enderman. Are you serious? I trapped it in a box and lit a TNT as close as possible. And after the first explosion, it was still alive. So I tried again and... Okay, I killed it. That one didn't drop an ender pearl, because of course, why would I be lucky enough to get an ender pearl? But all right, that's the first one dead. So this works two TNT per enderman. We need at least 12 pearls, so at least 24 TNT. I get such a little amount of gunpowder per night. I was gonna be at this for a while. Oh, and if you're wondering what happens when you hit the heart limit, which is eight rows of hearts, every time you take damage after that, a Minesweeper game pops up, which is cool, I guess. And if you beat Minesweeper, it'll take you to the credits. So I could have said this counts as me beating this update, but that felt too cheap, so I decided against it. So after literal hours of farming for creepers, I had all the TNT that I would need and was blowing up every Enderman that I saw, finally collecting some pearls. And after getting a decent amount, I decided to head off in search of the strong. Hold. Aside from boats just sinking because of this heart-shaped hole in them and having a couple of eyes break, I didn't have too hard of a time finding it. What the? 
Four respiration, three books, what is that? Now I can finally light the portal and go into the end. All I have to do is beat the dragon and this April Fool's update is done. There were so many pillars more in this old version of Minecraft that I'm used to. Luckily though, the dragon was very helpful in getting me to the top. Oh no, oh, okay. But since end crystals are entities though, I can't punch them to break them. So it's a good thing that I came prepared with snowballs to help me out. I also came prepared with materials to craft beds to explode the dragon for damage. Since I assume these won't be able to hurt me. And since this is the old version of Minecraft, the dragon will dive down to attack me. And whenever it does that, I can just... And that worked. As long as I didn't just fall into the void, I knew the rest of this dragon fight would be pretty simple. And that's exactly what it was. Let's go. That took so long. That was absurd. So that was the love and hugs update. But before moving on to the next one, let's check back in with Minecraft 2.0. All right. So after all the trial and error, apparently furnaces explode in this update. I think I figured out a strategy that could work. Every minute or so, I dig myself into a hole and cover my head. Sometimes this lessens the damage the lightning does to me, but more importantly, it protects me from the mobs that spawn. They despawn after 10 to 15 seconds, so that leaves me about 45 seconds to be on the surface in between each lightning strike. What made this run promising though, was that there's a desert temple here. Inside, I found iron, diamonds, and a bunch of gold. For once, I felt like I was making some real progress. Then, after waiting for the lightning to strike and the mobs to despawn, I needed to find a lava pool to make a portal and now is probably a good time to explain that this update has horrible graphics issues like chunks not loading my skin not loading and whatever this is but instead of letting this make the run harder for me i used it to my advantage i saw a lava pool underground and dug straight to it and finally made my first nether portal in this update but this is where things started to go wrong my portal spawned right next to another fortress, and I was even able to stay pretty hidden within the walls of the netherrack to protect myself from the lightning. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But as I was digging around trying to find the blaze spawner, I ran into a real problem. I have no food. And with lightning every 60 seconds, if I can't heal, of course. Oh my God. So it turns out food's pretty important. I've died so many times in this update, I legitimately didn't know if this was even possible to beat. After days of trying, I had barely even made it into the nether. It had already been almost a week of trying, so I was running out of time, but decided to try one more time. And good thing I did, because this attempt could be the one. But we'll come back to this and see if I can finally beat it. For now, I've gotta beat the next update, the trendy update. The trendy update started off weird. I created a brand new world and it started me off with random items and stuck in the ground suffocating. What? I created another new world and this one worked, so we're good now. This is the trendy update, which adds trendy tech to Minecraft like VR goggles. So I started off just gathering wood and getting myself some tools and food like normal, and then I headed to a nearby desert. I needed to find a lava pool to make a nether portal, but more importantly, the way you get the special tech added to this update is by killing the mobs that wear them. They only drop sometimes, and since the desert is the flattest biome, it seems like the easiest to hunt mobs in. And as night came around, I ran into my first mob with the special tech. Apparently mobs can't see me when they're wearing VR goggles, which was convenient. None of these mobs dropped VR, but this zombie was wearing a smarter watch and it dropped it. So I equipped the first piece of tech and just like real life smartwatches, I had a feeling this thing was gonna become kind of annoying. A constant clock displaying the end game time is always on screen, which isn't too bad, but it also beeps and notifies me every time I'm using weapons or tools or blocks or taking damage or literally anything. But for the sake of the challenge, I'll keep it on. Then a zombie dropped the VR goggles. With these equipped, you see a hologram of the world around you, like a 3D map, which actually looks pretty cool, but it wouldn't be fun to keep these on the whole time. So I'll take these off for now. I headed into a nearby cave to gather a bit of iron for a pickaxe, full set of armor, the rest of my tools and a bucket. Out of lava pool in the desert, I made a nether portal and headed inside. And this seemed like the perfect time to equip the VR goggles and open the 3D map. Walking around the nether with these on made it much easier to spot a nether fortress. I bridged over and found the blaze spawner and the smarter watch made sure to let me know every single time I took damage from the blaze's fire. I got all the blaze 
draws and was ready to leave the fortress, but a wither skeleton decided I should just leave the earth. But with me and my boy dinner in hand, that could never happen. So I made my way back to the real world and all I had left to do was gather ender pearls to go to the end and fight the dragon. I already had a couple pearls from endermen I killed before entering the nether. So I decided to craft them into ender eyes and work my way towards the stronghold right now and get the rest of the ender pearls once I've made the trip. On my way there, I found a zombie villager with the last remaining item from this update that I haven't found yet, the ankle monitor. Now, let me just stop right here and say, if you decide to play this update, do not equip this. You can't take it off. It doesn't even help you. It does the opposite. Each night, it tells me I'm violating curfew for not being at home and gives me slowness. I set my spawn here, which got it to stop since I'm technically home now. But as soon as I stepped too far away, I was violating house arrest again. This whole update didn't change much from vanilla Minecraft, honestly. And I guess with the exception of the VR goggles, all of these are just troll items. Even though the other updates have been harder and much more time consuming, this one has been by far my least favorite because it just wants to mess with you. But now it's time to fight the dragon like the big, strong, tough guy that I am. But even in the end, the trolling didn't stop. You can't sleep in the end. If you try, you'll die. Consider this your warning. But that means I'm always too far away from my home. I'm literally in another dimension. And the ankle monitor was not going to let that slide. As I was breaking the end crystals, the ankle monitor was giving me final warnings. And I started to worry that this monitor might end the run. Lastest warning, now you die. It better not kill me. Boom. Boom? Literally nothing happened. And throughout the dragon fight, the monitor just kept asking me stupid questions. Hello, are you there? Basically trying to flirt with me. And I'm pretty sure dating an ankle monitor would count as e-dating. And that is not for me. So I ignored it, got the last hits on the dragon, and finally beat this update. Yes, that's another one down. This is definitely the most generic update so far, but trust me, the ones coming up just get more and more insane. Before moving on to the next one though, let's check back on the progress with Minecraft 2.0. Right when I created the world, lightning struck and a bunch of mobs spawned. I was barely able to get away with less than four hearts, but luckily I spawned right next to a village. So I was able to gather some wood from there, but more importantly, food. Spawning next to a village just seemed like exactly what I needed to have a chance at beating this update. I was able to make stone tools, and then I got iron armor, tools, and ingots from a blacksmith chest. Now leaving the village, I gathered even more food, and as soon as night came around, I was already making a nether portal, already nearly caught up to my last attempt. But in this version of Minecraft, if there's other obsidian touching the portal, you won't be able to light it. I don't know if I was just delusional at this point or what, but my first idea was to use my stone pickaxe and break the obsidian. Not sure why I wanted to do that, but I got my axe together and remade the portal like a normal person would have and made my way to the nether. And now I've got to hide in the walls to avoid the lightning and slowly make my way around the nether looking for a nether fortress. So while I do that, let's check out the next update, 3D Minecraft. This is 3D Minecraft. It has visuals based on gaming from the 1990s, which is before our time, but it looked like this, I guess. The entire hotbar looks different, and honestly, I kind of like it. If it wasn't so, like, fried looking, like this entire update. All around the world are these flaming barrels that have random good loot in them, which is a nice change from current Minecraft, where you usually just get, like, a dead bush or something. And this update might look like it was recorded at 20 FPS, but this update was actually just made to look like that. It's a bit much on the eyes, but don't worry. This will be the quickest update in the whole video and here's why you can see at the top of the screen that part of the gimmick of this update is that they call it an unregistered version and they treat it like a trial run of minecraft which means they only give me five minecraft days which is only an hour and 40 minutes of real life time before the trial ends and i can't play on this world anymore the time limit might make it seem like beating this update is impossible but that's where the secret to this update comes into play just like old video games this is based on this april fools update has a bunch of secret cheat codes that you can type into chat. And those are my only hope for beating this update before time runs out. You'll see them all as we go on, but the first cheat code I'll be using is how do you turn this on? Which summons a horse, but not just any horse, the fastest and most powerful horse of all time. 
Oh, and this update keeps popping up these messages that tell you to press enter and just interrupt your whole game because Mojang couldn't just let one April Fool's update go by without it at least kind of being annoying and ruining your day. Anyway, I rode this super horse until I found a village where I immediately used the next cheat code, more DACA, which I don't even know what that means, but it gave me upgraded tools and armor. I also made sure to grab hay bales, but not for food like you might be thinking. This update is still before Piglin trading was added to the game. So the quick quickest way to get ender pearls is going to be by villager trading. And since I'm on a strict time limit here, I've got to get started right away. All of the loot barrels around the world turned most of these villagers into fishermen. And there's a bug in this update where even if I break the barrels, the villagers won't lose their job. So I have a very limited number of villagers to work with because I need farmer villagers to trade the wheat from the hay bales with for emeralds. Nighttime was coming around. So after I slept, I took a brewing stand to make a cleric villager when I'm ready to trade for the ender pearls. But none of these farming villagers had wheat to trade, so I had no choice but to leave and try to find another village. But this horse was a bit too fast and kind of inconvenient, so I decided to activate the next cheat code, pigs on the wing. And now I can fly! Still in survival, but this will make it much easier and quicker to move around. Which is good, because time has been flying by and I've made very little progress. I spent the next few minutes flying around until I found a spruce village. There was only one jobless villager here that I could turn into a farmer to trade my wheat, but it didn't even get the wheat trade. And since you can't reset them in this version, I immediately had to leave this village too to find another one. Day two had officially started now, so I was already 20% out of time and I still had zero emeralds and zero ender pearls. This was starting to seem harder than I thought it would be. I ended up finally finding a villager in another spruce village that actually turned into a farmer with a wheat trade. There was another villager here in the same village that I could do the same with. So now I finally have a few emeralds and have made a bit of progress, but not nearly enough. Each villager only trades me about five to six emeralds and I don't have time to wait for their trades to refresh so I had to leave this village again in search of a new one. This is pretty much how I spent the next chunk of time finding a new village, trading with any villagers I could find, and then moving on to the next village. I did all of this until day three came around and then I ended up in a snow village and I figured now was the time I needed to start leveling up a cleric villager to unlock the ender pearl trade. In between waiting for the cleric to refresh and unlock more trades, I traded with the only other villager here to get some more emeralds. And now entering day four of five, I was starting to get a little worried that I wouldn't have time to beat this. I still needed to get all the ender pearls and also have time to get blaze rods in the nether to craft the eyes of ender, find the stronghold, enter the end, and beat the dragon. All of that with such little time remaining. But I wasn't ready to give up yet. And things actually started taking a good turn. The cleric finally was refreshing its trades and I finally unlocked the ender pearl trade. But of course, things couldn't stay good for long. Are you serious? The price went up and I'm one emerald short. I headed out quickly to try to find another village to get any more emeralds so I could come back and trade for that final pearl. But while I was searching, I ended up finding a patch of pumpkins not far away, which I can also trade to the farming villager. And of course, the wheat trade was discounted now, so I could have gotten another emerald anyway, but whatever. So now with that trading side quest done, it was time to enter the nether. I'm deep enough into this run that I'm not taking any risks. So I enter the next cheat code of this update, Power Overwhelming, which makes me literally immune to damage. I'm basically in creative mode now, except I don't have infinite items. Unless you type in the next cheat code, no, I'm just kidding. But the nether fortress and blaze spawner are right here, so I can quickly grab the blaze rods that I need as the final day begins. I have less than 20 minutes to find the stronghold, enter the end, and beat the dragon. This is going to be tough. I don't know if I'll have enough time. As quickly as I could, I located where the stronghold was. I started digging straight down, somehow grabbed my first stone of the run, and the ender eyes led me right where I needed to be. I ran around and found the portal room, filled in the eyes as quickly as possible, and now all I have left to do is fight the dragon with only only minutes to spare. Because I can fly and I don't take damage, I can fly right up to the end crystals and break them. And now with time really running out, I was kicking myself at this point for not thinking about grabbing beds from all the villages I was at and using those to kill the dragon quickly. But I can't focus on that now. I'd have to use my sword to slowly chip down the dragon's health. And since this update makes all the mobs look 2D, it was hard to even land a hit. So I turned on hitboxes, which made it a lot easier. But what really helped was remembering that I got this multi-shot 12 crossbow from an earlier cheat code and that was pretty OP. Now with only a sliver of health left on the dragon and a sliver of time left on the timer, it was now or never. Please! Yes! Let's go! 
So that was 3D Minecraft. And as soon as the timer ran out, the demo had expired and I could buy the game or make a new world. I couldn't place blocks, break blocks, or literally anything besides just move around. So now before moving on to the next update, let's check back in with progress on Minecraft 2.0. After wandering around the nether as safely as possible, I found a nether fortress. Oh, let's go. Fortress. The blaze spawner was really close, so I immediately dug a hole for myself to hide in from the lightning. Then I spent the next many, many, many minutes hitting the blazes, running back, hiding and eating, and doing it all over again. And I didn't even almost die a bunch of times. I made my way back, making sure to stay inside the walls as often as I could to avoid the mobs. And finally, I was back in the overworld. I decided to cook some more food, but only one at a time because I didn't want the furnace to explode on me like last time. This is the furthest I have gone in this update and it actually looked like I had a chance of beating it. But the hardest part was still ahead of me. I need to find and kill enough endermen to get 12 ender pearls, find the stronghold, and then somehow beat the dragon. Since the lightning was still happening in the nether, I'm guessing it still does in the end. So fighting the dragon is gonna be tough. So we'll come back to this later in the video. Let's check out the next update, ultimate content. This update adds roughly 40 octillion new dimensions. And not basic dimensions like the nether or the end. These dimensions can get crazy. There's even one I'll go to later in the video where the entire world is literally made out of netherite blocks. So this update is gonna be insane. You access these new dimensions by writing in a book and quill anything you want and throwing it into a nether portal. That'll change the color of it. And instead of the nether being inside, it's a world full of diamond blocks. And and some hoglins, but those are fine. But with this dimension, I'm able to get myself full diamond armor and tools, and it's only been a few minutes. This is one of the most OP updates, and I'm gonna show you the best dimensions. Before that though, I wanna have a more stable home than just the middle of the desert. So I gathered some obsidian and headed out to find a village. I'm taking over the librarian's house. I'm the new village librarian. I immediately started demolishing this house to install a new portal. And then I made some repairs because I'm not a degenerate. Now time for the next dimension, seven. This dimension might seem pretty basic, even though it does have some nice stuff like lapis, which I can use for enchanting. But the real secret to this dimension comes when you explore for just a little bit, because eventually you'll find an end city. But be careful because these aren't ordinary end cities. These ones are covered in way more shulkers than normal. So getting into the end ship might be a bit difficult. And we're in. Oh my gosh. Um, there was some kind of glitch in this dimension that made there be like a hundred elytra. Hey, I'm not complaining. I got a little bit of a gear upgrade from this chest as well. And then I flew my way home. Now, full enchanted diamond gear and an elytra might seem like the end game, but this dimension is really gonna put us on top an entire dimension full of netherite blocks. My gear is about to get a massive upgrade, but this still isn't even as strong as I'm going to get. Before I left this dimension though, I noticed a structure. And when I pillared up and got inside, I realized it's the basement of an igloo. And just like the elytra from earlier, a bunch of weakness potions and the zombie villagers were duplicated. I went up the ladder and found the roof of this dimension, which was mostly bedrock and mushroom blocks, but it also had more end cities. I checked it out and the elytra wasn't duped this time. So I only got one, not that I needed any more, <laughs> but there was a looting three sword here, which might be useful later. And all these chests on the ground are the starter loot chests. So they have like wooden tools, but I was able to gather a bunch of apples for food from them too. Overall, this is a pretty great dimension. I headed back to the overworld and upgraded all of my gear to netherite, but the enchantments aren't the best. So I'm gonna need some bookshelves to get a maxed out enchanting table. And just like everything else, there's a dimension for that. This dimension might look like a normal Minecraft world, but like yellow with the weird shadows, but instead of stone underground, it's bookshelves. Exactly what I need. I already have an actual enchanting table, but what I don't have is XP. And that's where the final dimension comes in. This might look like a basic nether themed biome, but with honeycomb, but the entire bottom layer of this dimension is made of core or I don't care about the actual quartz, but this stuff drops so much XP, it might as well be an infinite XP farm. I 
I built my enchanting setup and kept enchanting my gear over and over again until I got great enchants. I even enchanted a netherite hoe. Not really sure why, but who cares? I have infinite XP and netherite. So now with pretty much maxed out gear, I'm finally ready to fight the dragon and beat the game. Oh. I made another portal and headed inside to gather all the ender pearls and blaze rods I need for the eyes of ender and that looting three sword I found earlier really came in handy. I followed the path the eyes took me on, found the stronghold and the portal, and I only fell into lava once. I filled in the eyes and headed into the end. Are you serious? And with the elytra and rockets, taking out the crystals was super easy and having maxed out netherite armor and weapons made me deal massive damage to the dragon and it was basically impossible for me to die. Going to the right dimensions in this update makes this a super easy dragon fight. But surprisingly, this isn't even going to be the easiest dragon fight I have across all the April Fool's updates. But you'll see that later. For now, let's check back in with the hardest update, Minecraft 2.0. To finally beat Minecraft 2.0, the hardest update Minecraft has ever made, all I have left to do is gather 12 ender pearls, find the stronghold, and then finally we can fight the dragon. This area I'm in is pretty flat, which seemed like the best spot to try to farm endermen for pearls. So as night came around, I built a platform over my head and lured the endermen over, and I got my first pearl. I was getting a bit cocky at this point and kind of forgot about the lightning and the mobs that spawn every 60 seconds. So when it happened this time... I barely made it out alive. This is a reminder I needed that even though I had come this far, now was not the time to let my guard down. So I spent the next couple hours spending each night hunting for endermen. I got the ender pearls I needed and headed out to find the stronghold so I can finally go to the end. But before that, there's only two more April Fool's updates left. So let's try to beat the next one, one block at a time. This update has you using both hands, it removed the hotbar, it removed food, and your whole inventory. So I've got to hold everything like this, and only one block at a time. Since I don't have an inventory, that immediately poses the question, how do I craft anything? Since I can't make a crafting table myself, I'll have to find one that spawns naturally. The only places in the game that spawn with crafting tables are witch huts, igloos, pillager outposts, and some villages. Villages are the most common out of those, so so that's what I'm gonna try to find. While I was searching, I learned that you can pick up anything, even these grass things. You don't need a specific tool, just your hands will do. I also learned that instead of attacking mobs, you pick them up. What the? But you can't just peacefully set them down. You have to launch them. Sorry, sheep. But then I stumbled across the village. If I can't craft items, I can't beat the game. So finding a crafting table here is really important. So it was pretty bad news when I realized after checking all the houses, not a single one of them had a crafting table. So I left the town in search of another village, but that one didn't have any crafting tables either. So I went in search of another village and... Okay, this is getting ridiculous. That night though, I found a village in an acacia biome that finally had a crafting table. <gasps> oh my gosh, yes, a crafting table. But since we don't have an inventory, I can't just right click and open the crafting table. So it took me a bit to figure out, but you have to throw things on top of the crafting table to actually craft things. It's kind of hard to do. So having multiple crafting tables on the ground was making it a bit easier. But now that I have that figured out, I need a bucket to make a nether portal to finally start progressing. Instead of trying to figure out how to mine iron and somehow smelt it. I just picked up the village's iron golem and since I can't hurt it directly and it doesn't take fall damage from me throwing it, the best idea seemed to be to throw him in the lava pool and let the fire kill him so I can get the iron drops. But I messed up the timing a little bit and it all burned. I thought about going back to one of the old villages I found and bringing an iron golem here, but that's when I figured out how to open chests. And inside that chest was a bucket. Apparently though, you can't just fill up a bucket of water like normal, because I guess that would have been too much to ask. I've been playing these updates for too long. I'm losing my mind. Eventually, I thought of trying to use the cauldrons that the villagers have, and that actually worked. I took that water bucket over to the lava pool and tried to place the water bucket down, but I accidentally just threw it. Yeah, so even though I messed it up, I was staying positive and decided to try to break the obsidian by hand. And yes, this felt like an eternity. I decided to just start making the portal here since there was already some obsidian placed down from the water. But to try to speed this up a little bit, I decided to try crafting myself a wooden pickaxe. Because even though it's still slow, breaking obsidian is significantly faster with a wooden pickaxe than it is with your fist. 
But once I got it, it made five pickaxes. So that was a nice surprise. So I just took the wooden ones and started peacefully minding my own business and mining the obsidian. A zombie showed up, attacked me, stole what? the obsidian, and wouldn't even give it back. Even after I killed it, the obsidian didn't drop. I literally cannot catch a break today. If only I knew that something like this, but even worse, was gonna happen later. I decided to go back to the village to sleep, pass the night, and get rid of these mobs. The first bed I tried, though, had the corpse of my old pet chicken. My chicken! So I couldn't sleep there. The second bed I tried had so much bread and seeds that it literally hurt me. But the third bed was just right. Close the door! It took just under 30 minutes, but I was finally able to build the portal, but now I have to light it somehow. I don't have any iron for a flint and steel, and I don't even know if I can get flint. So I went to try to throw some gravel, and it made fire. I was able to use this fire and light the portal, finally giving me access to the nether. Do we happen to have a nether fortress, like, right next to our portal? Because that would be fantastic. I don't see one. Oh my gosh, wait! No way! Let's go! I swear on my life this is not a set seed or anything. But now that I'm in another fortress, this is where the update gets even weirder than it already was. In this April Fool's update, I don't need to get blaze rods for Eyes of Ender. In fact, I don't even need blazes at all. So why do I need another fortress? Well, the chests here have some interesting loot. Yes, okay, that's what I was thinking we'd get. An end portal frame with an Eye of Ender in it. This is what we need. Yeah, so I don't need Ender Eyes. Instead, I need to find 12 of these end portal frames to build the end portal myself. Oh, and watch out for the wither skeletons because they'll steal the portals and you can't get them back. And this is the part where I figured I should tell you, if you decide to play this update, this is the part where you flat out just will not have fun. Just getting these 12 portal frames took me three hours and multiple different nether fortresses to be able to find enough chests. Oh, and let me give you a tip to avoid a mistake that I made. Apparently, you can't just build the portal in the overworld like I tried to. You have to build it in the stronghold, which you can only find by following the direction the end portal frames are pointing when you place them down. So it's even more of a pain to find than normal when you use ender eyes. So I had to pick up all the portal frames, which take forever to break by the way, and bring them over one block at a time. So after even more hours, the portal was finally built. Before going through though, I needed to come up with a way to actually fight the dragon. I don't have weapons or armor, so I've got to think of something. What came to mind first was picking up a skeleton and using it like a turret to shoot the dragon. This will work, but the arrows don't shoot high enough to be able to hit the end crystals, and it's not like I can just bring a bunch of blocks to pillar up with, and the only way I know to get high is flying with a chicken, baby! That's right, these guys don't just let you float down safely. If I spam space, I can fly with them. I can't carry both the skeleton and the chicken at the same time, so I have to throw them in the portal before I go in and hope that I get a good end spawn and we all survive. So here goes nothing. No, the skeleton went away. Okay, so I'm trapped in here without a way to attack the dragon. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. The Endermen here are all holding random items, and I even found one holding a bed. So my plan at this point was to wait for the Endermen to place the bed down so I can pick it up and use it to bed bomb the dragon to kill it. Hopefully that'll work, but while I wait for Endermen to place down beds, I need to get to work breaking the end crystals. The Endermen also place a bunch of water around, so I can fly up to the crystals with my chicken, throw the chicken down to safety, then I can grab the crystal and make a jump for it before the dragon gets me. Okay. Okay, so now I have a working strategy I can use to take out all the end crystals. This pillar doesn't have water close enough to it to jump to, so I found a cobweb that an enderman had placed down, and I brought it over to the pillar so I could jump to that instead. I'm kinda big brain like that. And with the crystals all gone now, I went to look for any beds the Enderman might have placed down, and it looks like they placed down every block ever, like diamond blocks, end portal gateways, even beacons, but not a single bed, or even a crafting table to try to make beds. Without beds, I don't know how to attack the dragon. Oh, there goes the chicken. Okay, and now I'm really trapped here. I picked up the body of my dead chicken and tried throwing it at the dragon to damage it, but that didn't work. But then I finally just tried punching. Oh, what? 
So by just punching it, I had tamed the dragon and it was all mine. What? This counts as beating the dragon, the health bar is gone, and the end portal is open. So that is the one block at a time update done. We're getting close to the end. So let's see how Minecraft 2.0 is going. With the Eyes of Ender I farmed, I was able to find my way to the stronghold. Well, most of the way to the stronghold. Even with the eyes, I was having trouble finding it. But once again, the world not loading in this version really came in clutch. I dug straight down, landed in the portal room, and placed the eyes. The portal already had a couple in it, which left me only two more to place myself. I went around the stronghold looking for any ender pearls and chests, and was a bit too slow remembering to hide from the lightning. Oh my gosh, that was too close. After that, I had all the ender eyes I needed and made sure to grab some snowballs from the surface to destroy the end crystals. So now with the portal lit, it's time to head into the end and fight the dragon on Minecraft's most impossible update. Before this final fight though, let's beat the last remaining April Fool's update, the vote update. This is the final and most recent April Fool's update, the vote update. Every so often, a prompt will pop up with a few different options to vote on, each one usually changing the game in a pretty significant way. There are nearly 200 changes to vote for that all stack on top of each other, so let's see if I can beat Minecraft as this world gets more and more insane as we go. Immediately after getting myself stone tools and some food, a vote popped up that would either unlock packed air and let me ride cows to the moon, or do nothing. Obviously, I'm voting to be able to go to the moon. Things are going to get crazy this update, so I'll be going to the moon later. Everything that I vote for has a countdown timer until the vote comes into effect. That timer is so other players have time to vote too, but I don't have the friends to do that. I'm all alone, so it's only my votes, so we just gotta wait. Anyway, I dropped down into this nearby cave, gathered some iron, dealt with a zombie, and then cooked my food and iron for an iron pickaxe and a bucket. Then the next vote came up that would add something called the other portal, but also increase the player size by 0.5 times. For some reason, at the time, I thought this meant I would be shrunk to half size, so I voted for it thinking it wouldn't really be an issue, but in reality, it meant that I would become three blocks tall instead of two. This did become an issue, and you'll see why very soon. After collecting a bit more iron to use for armor, another vote came up that would replace an item in my inventory with something else random, and this one would replace my water bucket item, which wasn't the best deal, but it also would make the world haunted, which seemed pretty fun, so that's what I voted for. After the fact, I looked up what this does, and apparently it makes buttons and levers and all of that randomly activate in the world, but I'm not going to be building any redstone contraptions, so this basically did nothing. It was kind of a letdown. I was hoping to see some ghosts floating around. After that, I found a huge lava pool in this cave and decided this would be a great spot to make a portal and head into the nether. Oh, right next to a fortress. While I was collecting netherrack for blocks to bridge the fortress, the vote from earlier activated and caused me to grow three blocks tall. Oh great, this is so weird. So accepting that I'd be suffering like this for the time being, I made my way to the nether fortress and immediately got ambushed by a bunch of wither skeletons. But since I'm really talented at Minecraft, I got away completely safe. Now I just need to collect some blaze rods and being three blocks tall was actually making it easier at first to get the blazes who tried to fly away, but it was hard to get crits in the actual blaze spawner room. Look how big I am. So I crafted a shield to make killing them a little bit easier. Then I just collected the rest of the blaze rods I needed and that just left me the task of getting ender pearls which wasn't too hard since we're in a pretty modern version of Minecraft and could just find endermen in the blue biomes which happened to be right next to our portal. And there was a bit of voting I was able to do while collecting these pearls too. Like I voted to disable rain and make cherry blossom saplings drop anvils. I voted to make all cow entities rideable and voted to make my head giant. Everything was going great or so I thought. This is where being three blocks tall actually became a problem that could legitimately end the run and make me fail this whole challenge when I'm so close to the end. No, I'm literally stuck. Are you serious? I'm trapped. I can't break a block. I portal trapped myself by being big. I can't open my inventory. I can't pearl out. I can't dig. Yeah, I accidentally trapped myself in my own portal. Normally, having just a water bucket would be a perfect escape since you can just place the water on yourself and it would destroy the portal allowing me to dig out, but remember earlier when I voted to have my water bucket replaced with another item? Yeah, I had no water either. My only option was to sit here and wait for new votes and hope to get something that would set me free. And after over 30 minutes of waiting, I finally got something. Oh my gosh. Reset every player's scale. Oh my gosh. Yes. 
So I voted for that, had to wait 14 more minutes for it to activate, and then finally I'm free. How did this not fit through a portal? After all this time, I was able to make my way back up to the surface and it felt like such a breath of fresh air. I saw some glow bees that I voted for. I got to test out the evil eyes, which basically make my fist one shot everything and have infinite reach. And then I paid the price of making players undead because I was just burning in the sun, but I was able to vote to get rid of that almost right away. So it worked out. And since I did vote to make chickens lay random items instead of eggs, I even got a free diamond chest plate. And then immediately after, <gasps> what? A netherite chest plate? Don't mind if I do. Are you serious? And now I'm pretty much ready to go to the stronghold and attempt to beat the game and this final update. But not before we check out the moon, which since we voted for it is pretty easy to do. I collected some sand, smelted it into glass for glass bottles, which can be crafted into air. It's there, I promise. Then if I feed 10 of those to a cow, and ride it. Here on the moon, we have much lower gravity and there's a bunch of space cows that drop cheese, glass, and bottles. So as long as there's these cows around, we'll never actually run out of air because we can always just craft more. Since here on the moon, we do need to keep an eye on our oxygen levels or we'll suffocate. I decided to do a bit of exploring and ended up finding this little machine that I guess is called a self-building lunar base, which sounded pretty interesting to me. So I stepped on the gold pressure plate and watched the chaos happen as I got surrounded by hundreds or thousands of copper blocks automatically building themselves. The lunar base has some chests and even shulker boxes with some basic materials, which was honestly pretty nice. But at this point, my oxygen levels were getting pretty low. I was about to be out of breath and I didn't really know how to fix it. I had air in my inventory, but didn't know how to use it. I thought you would just be able to eat it or something, but that didn't work. And now I was down to my last bubble and started to panic a bit. My last idea was that maybe I needed packed air instead of regular air. So I crafted a block of that, sealed myself back in the room and was able to place the packed air inside and finally breathe again. After getting full on air, I decided to leave the lunar base, ate some of the moon since it's made of cheese after all, and then decided it was time to head back to earth and beat the game. So I fed a space cow a bunch of air and blasted off. All of a sudden, I was leaving dirt trails behind and it was one of those kids who wears a fox tail. I don't remember voting for that, but at this point, I don't even care anymore. It was time to finally attempt to beat the game and end this insane challenge once and for all. I followed the eyes of Ender and had a pretty simple time finding the stronghold and the portal. So I jumped inside and readied myself for the final fight. At this point, I had almost forgotten that I still had my evil eyes. So that meant from infinite range, I could break the crystals, instant mine this obsidian to get the really tall ones and find finally completely destroyed the dragon in just a couple of punches. And now for the finale. All right, this is it. The very final update, the final dragon fight, the hardest April Fool's update. At the start, I didn't even think this was possible. And now it's time to find out if I was right or wrong. There were pillars everywhere, so I started throwing snowballs all around to destroy the crystals. The really tall ones, I had to pillar up though. Then I figured lightning would be coming soon, so I dug into the ground and covered my head like I always do, but the dragon almost immediately broke the block. Luckily I noticed and was able to replace the block in time before the lightning struck, but the dragon breaking my blocks was only going to become more of a problem. I had to keep pillaring up to get the tall crystals and... Oh my gosh. And immediately after that insane clutch, I had to dig to avoid the lightning. And while I was in there, the dragon flew through the ground and hit me, dealing a bunch of damage. Now I had even more to worry about and it wasn't going to get any easier. But now all the crystals are taken care of and I have to somehow survive killing the dragon. My main strategy was to shoot the dragon as soon as it dives at me to attack, then hide and wait for the lightning. This was working for a while and I got the dragon down to very low health, but the lightning had broken all of my armor and I'm out of arrows. The only thing I have left is a bed. If I can use this to blow up the dragon first, I win. If I mess up and the dragon hits me first, I die and I lose. It's all riding on this. Here goes nothing. Yes! Yes! 
Oh my gosh. And that is it. Finally, every single April Fool's update beaten. I can't believe I pulled this off. This was insanely hard. I did a 100 days video of just the Infinite Dimensions update, and you can watch that here. But more importantly, subscribe!